and welcome to Phoenix Iwaki. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. And we are brought to you by the kind support of CZRPG, Phoenix Dice, Troll Lord Games, and Nathrax 3D Minis. Look out for your chance to win in our fabulous giveaways. Check the session for today's giveaway. And, of course, you can get yourselves a lovely discount over on their homepages using the coupon codes that will pop up in chat. Do not miss this amazing stuff. CZRPG with their beautiful encounter design, maps, a fantastic Patreon for you to join. Phoenix Dice, their incredible, sustainably produced, recycled packaging and everything. The wonderful Clicklap Math Rocks, do check them out. Trollord Games with their incredible Castles and Crusades original system and lots of D&D content as well. And the beautiful 3D printed and beautifully painted, if you wish, minis of Nathrax 3D minis. Absolutely wonderful stuff. Please check them out and let them know that the Odyssey sent you. Now, let us also say a huge thank you to the wonderful people over at Sirenscape. Amazing music and sound effects for your games and just makes the whole experience a completely different level. Check them out, stuff for D&D, Pathfinder, Call of Cthulhu, other game systems, board games, science fiction, fantasy, everything you need. Link in chat for your chance to get a free trial of this amazing product. Now, let's get into the session. To adventure! whenever you are and welcome back to Phoenix Iwaki and welcome back to the grim dark depths of the Underdark. Thank you Sirenscape for the nice swell of music. A massive hello to everyone jumping in there already and having an incoming hype train right away. I see you lovely folks there. Thank you so much. Good to see everybody. Hope you're doing well. The giveaway is open! Exclamation mark enter for your chance to win the fabulous winter map bundle from CZRPG. Lots of cool maps and people will swear to the uh, quality and quantity of maps that you get in those bundles. Those who have been uh, lucky enough to um, win in the past. There's lots and lots of maps to fill in those wintry locations as we come still in the cold months here. Um, if you want to have something to inspire or one shot or need a quick map for your games, please exclamation mark enter in the chat for your chance to win at the end of the session. And a massive, massive thank you to all of those lovely folks in that pre-reel for supporting the channel. Hey, Daisy, thank you for that gifted sub. And um, we are delighted to be sort of supported by them and all of you folks with those lovely gifted subs over there. Thank you so much. And subs for yourselves as well. Um, so, um, McClover was the first one, right? Yes, McClover and... Oh, and Bits too, thank you. McClover and Rishi and Daisy, who gets the spins of the veal? If you want to kind of even things out a little bit, Corbin does have a wild magic surge in the bank. So uh, if you want to give it to Elora, Kalo, and Zakan. <laughs> nope, Corbin. Okay. <laughs> Corbin gets one. Rishi? Daisy? Every Who do you fancy? Give Corbin spin, every single spin, spin, one spin so we two. can get four wild magic surges. <laughs> Up them chances for Halo, a pair. of course, from Rishi. Oh, Rishi. Thank you. And Daisy, who do you fancy giving a, a spin of the wheel to? No, it's okay, McLovin. No worry, man. Ooh. <laughs> strange, strange bird-like creature comes flying over the top. Um, okay, so I'm going to skip that. So those first ones sorted. Um, and Elora. Okay, Zakan, you win. You escape. <laughs> Um, Did you say Zakan escapes? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Incoming. Okay. Um, <laughs> thank you, Grim. Hey, all's fair. All's fair. <laughs> Who's this Grim guy? Balance is restored. Yeah, who is this Grim guy? Unbelievable. I don't know. I don't know. Shady character. Okay. Very shady. <laughs> now, shady um, also, um, let me do a quick shout out to our Out of the Abyss artist, the fabulous Ryu Toshi. Oh, hang on. I think there might be two A's. 
Yes, there are. Okay, the fantastic Ryutoshi over there on Instagram if you want beautiful character art like these for your OCs or characters too. Up to a level 2 hype train already. Thank you, everybody. You legends. Okay, so let's get these spins done and then we can jump into the recap and get our other adventures on the way. Hey, Papa, how you doing, mate? Okay, so... Adventure! Who dat? Phantom! You have upset the balance. <laughs> you are meant to restore the balance! Fantakin! <laughs> oh, double Zakan! Double Zakan! Notice it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go no, left, yeah. left to right as I see it. Elora, Lustrous. Spinny, spin, spin, uh, coming for you. Let chaos rain! Indeed. Boop! Whoops, all charisma. Art imitates wow. life. There we go. Okay. Um, so please bump your charisma up to a nice 20 there, Laura, and intimidate or charm to your... or oh, lie to your heart's desire. <laughs> hey, Jeff. Or perform. <laughs> Kalo. 100% agree that the zoo needs to be expanded. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. <gasps> Kalo. Yeah. You remember how you were large? <laughs> I think I remember. Now you... <laughs> Enormous. Are they extra large? <laughs> yes. Oh. I think I'm called uh, uh, a biggie now. <laughs> you, no, you a chunker. Oh, Lord, he coming. He <laughs> oh, Lord. Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord, he coming. Oh, Lord, he coming. <laughs> Corbin, Corbin, not an animal companion. Not an animal companion. <gasps> Come on, animal companion. Can anyone spell double wild magic search? Double wild magic search. <laughs> yes. That's fine. That is absolutely fine. I'm yes. still just over here looking at Kalo like it's coffee season. <laughs> hang on, hang on. You have you have druid and ro uh, monk, don't you? You almost called me a rogue. I really did, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's there, right? I have it's been very shady. Behavior wise, yeah. <laughs> I've been very shady lately. Also, also criminal also stretch. <laughs> My background is criminal. That covers all of that. Leave it alone. There you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just because my family is criminal as you think I'm a rogue. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I come from bad guys. Don't mean I bad guy. <laughs> Thank you, Zeki. Um, so, Corbin, give me another D100 pre-roll for a monk. <laughs> um, okay. Surge as well. Oh, yeah. No, I do, I'm doing that in chat. I'm doing that in chat. Do. So everybody Let's can do. be a part of the madness. And then two for Zagan, because he, he do what he do. Uh, <laughs> there's the there's the random companion. <laughs> Who has it? Also, your second. So, little buddy's gonna join you here, Zakan, in the, ma in the market. <laughs> and we give it and take it away. No, no, Zakan shrinks aside. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Slaw. But it's fine because you can now ride your animal companion. Potentially, <laughs> potentially. Nah. Um, Zakan, are you in uh, Twitch chat? Um, I can be. Or, or roll twenty is okay. B one. Oh, okay, I'll do it roll twenty. Hey, thanks for the hype train, everyone. Awesome. Um, could you please in roll twenty chat type slash r space one d twenty eight. I just rolled and it said I, I rolled a nothing. Wow. As it's in, broke. A zero? As in a hundred? Oh. Is that, is 24. Buns, just roll 100. Not yeah, oh, you do, yeah, you don't need the D oh. there. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Small boy. Yes, small small cleric. Small boy. Honey, we shrunk the con. <laughs> <laughs> I think I look into your men's or brands and accent there. We, <laughs> thank we you, shrunk the kids. Thank you, dragon boy. <laughs> 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 right? It's impressive. It's the secret there other side. 28. 22. I got a 28. Huh? 22. Oh, 22. Wait, 22. Wait. Yeah. Chav. Oh, Chav. Chav got 28. Oh, okay. <laughs> don't do that. I'm not wearing my glasses. I don't know what any of this is. <laughs> and Zakan rolled a 24. Okay. Indeed, indeed. Let me jump over to Cobalt Fight Club. Ta da! As the music swells, as the animal companion descends from a beam of light from the heavens above. Or is it just some glowing mushrooms? <laughs> okay, so our CR0 beasts at 
24. Okay, we've got 10 on a page, so that's 10, 20. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. That chuckle. You know what that means. It's a con. In all of your travels through the Underdark and your, your several excursions in the region of the Dark Lake, you have become aware of all of the various fauna that exist in those mysterious waters. I have. But here in Mantledareth, near the Drow Enclave, beneath the massive majestic mushroom canopy above you, where we have met Kalo's father, you go to have a swig from your canteen and realize that as you leapt over the side of the Zentarum canoes to beach on the edge of Mantledareth's shoreline, cresting up against the massive pillar rising to the ceiling above. There is something in your canteen. Something in the in, well, the way you jumped out must have knocked the cap off. Something must have swum in there. And you find yourself the proud owner of a dark lake seahorse. <laughs> Incredible. We are best friends with my crab. Your crab, your crab is gone. I'm that sorry. Not, I don't say oh, that. Really. No, it yeah, is. no, yeah, it jumped, it jumped into this. Yep, yep. In the same same Dark Lake excursion, it has gone off to become an invasive species. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you went home, kind of. Yeah, I can't I can't wait until they eventually evolve into like some very, type of sized crab. I'm very tempted Penguin. to use I'm very tempted to use the crab monster that nerd immersion the YouTuber made for one of the Cobalt <laughs> Press uh, one of the Cobalt Press monster manuals, which is the samurai crab. <laughs> which are uh, crabs <laughs> crabs that, that have, it's my aesthetic i'm just saying right they've been they've been twisted by magic and they've observed other species using weapons and they they clamber up onto battlefields and take hold of the fallen swords and weapons and wield them <laughs> so they had little sword wielding Incredible. crabs <laughs> so so good mm -hmm. so okay fun. so what you're saying is sooner or later i could find my crab again <laughs> and it will be one of these things. That's awesome. <laughs> and it will be armed and ready, yes. <laughs> it will remember me. It is my aminal companion. Yes. <laughs> As it leaps like from the water, a world it's like of... like free willy, it never forgets. <laughs> no, you can't forget. A world, of, a world of claw, blade, and legs. As it goes... <gasps> Every oh. meme of a crab holding a butter knife. It's just it's all this crab. It's incredible. <laughs> yes, indeed, yes, indeed. <laughs> Um, yes, everyone. You, you you thought the internet was done with fish knife, but no. No. <laughs> next, next is crab sword. <laughs> okay. There's like a, a Dark Souls crab game Knifefish? coming out. What's it called? Uh, sometime soon. <laughs> okay. Out of the abyss, the out of the abyss uh, game has fishing. Oh wow! I'm gonna have to need some mods for this. I don't know if I can. <laughs> fishing mini game. Oh, hey, yeah, fishing mini game. Thank you, my friends. Now. As we return to these these oh, phase rest, these phase rest induced shenanigans, you have travelled long and far through various dangers in the Underdark to this, the interior of this huge stone pillar, twixt the dark lake and the cavernous ceiling above. That is, the outer walls of the rare instance of collaboration and truce. That is Mantle Dareth. At least that's what it was last time Zakarn and Kalo were here. For this is the location that Zakarn delivered Kalo and his father to when they were fleeing the evils of Menzo Voranzen. You have been sent by Brunor, the king of the dwarven citadel Gauntlegrim, once adventuring companion of Dritz Duorden, to travel here and find the Zentarum named Gazrim Duloc, who has the means to find the location of the stone giant's mystical library known as Graven Hollow, a location that has been shown to you in visions previously, as you met the stone giants of Grackelstuck, the Durgar city. The Zentarum agents took you through their secret ways and via their outposts in the Underdark 
one of which had been overrun by crazed berserkers, sent even wilder by the spores of Zugtamoy, the corruption of the demon queen of fungi. And as the Zentarum agents brought you through their secret ways into the trading post, bless you, Laura, you quickly realized that all was not well. As you emerged out of the trench up into the market area above, you found a scene of chaos. Stalls and goods tipped overturned in the southern reaches of the market, and Durgar underdark dwarves chasing and seeking to capture Sverf Neblin as they were attempting to also batter down the doors of the Sverf Neblin enclave. Kalo, fearing for his father's well-being and safety, took the team up to the north, into the northeast corner, where the Drow Enclave is situated. And there, beneath the majestic mushroom that is the pavilion where the Drow conduct their business, they found Rufus, kicking his heels. Kalo, the familiar, scarring of that unfortunate run-in with the black pudding he had in your escape from Enzo Baranzan on his face. But I must say, hot dad? Hot dad. Confirmed <laughs> hot dad. You heard it here first. Here he is. Look at him. <laughs> ignore the... Canonically hot dad. Ignore the name. <laughs> Keep showing me these people like I'm not still going to want to hit that April. <laughs> <laughs> if I can go after spider assassin lady I can go after anybody <laughs> you're cowards that's what I'm hearing <laughs> so Rufus great greeted you Kalo surprised by how much you'd grown and the fact that your eyes have melted from your face <laughs> Two, two big changes since you last met fair right if fair <laughs> I mean, uh, it's right? black right <laughs> yes pools of darkness and even as you talk, the phase rests surges again. One reason the uh, drow were happy to be part of this mercantile venture here, as they do like to inhabit locations where the phase rest is strong. And you found yourself growing even taller, almost as tall as the large fungi that is central to this grove outside the main drow quarters. <sighs> Kalo! What is it that has... that has caused this? No. No magics I have learnt could have such an effect. Maybe halfway there, but... You are so... You are so big, so large, so tall, and... You have made so many companions. <laughs> Look at this tiny little fellow with the mask. Hello there. <laughs> what is your name? Oh, did I? Oh, I have shrunk down again. Um, I am Zakan. Uh, uh, and I'm usually not tiny. Uh, ah, I know what this is. Did you find a strange caterpillar smoking a hooker and dealing out parts of his mushroom? It is... There's a what? Where? <laughs> I've not seen him for 60, 70 years. Is he, is he still you, around? You <laughs> <this> did? <laughs> I've was... been keeping you away from it with all my heart, Corbin. <laughs> there was a little... And I'll introduce you to you. <laughs> there was a little human girl in a blue pinafore dress. She came skipping through. I, I do not... I have not seen them since. And anyway, um... <laughs> it is a pleasure to meet... Friends of Kalo, they are, of course, friends of mine. I am Kalo's father, Rufus. Yes, you are, father, and introductions may have to be a little short. Sit down, Kalo, 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 why do you have to come back with that stupid surface accent every time? We have fled <laughs> Menzo Baranzan, but has Menzo Baranzan fled you? I really hate when you do this. 
in front of my friends. I just... Can't we just for once talk like normal? <laughs> it's just I want I'm... to remember the little Kaloli that I used to love so much. <sighs> this accent was French, but it's, it's going on a little European tour now. Across <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the continent. <laughs> to, to be frank, Father, to to be frank Father, I wrote a little Russian into it as well. Listen, uh, Father. Nice it's, well. in, it's in a gap year, it's doing an interrail like, trip. Yeah. It's becoming Five Goes West, west <laughs> over here. <laughs> Father, look, introductions we can do later. More importantly, what the hell is going on with the rest of Mantle Death? I don't know how much you're privy to this. Uh, there is open hostility that we have not seen since we've gotten here. What is that about? Um, yeah, I... <sighs> There has been quite a ruckus, it is true. I, I, I do not know what is happening, but um, the truce, the peace that is always here, was suddenly shattered. Um, there is a... Uh, there is some beef between our southern neighbors, and the, the Dugar and the uh, Svavneblin are at each other's throats. So I do not know what is happening. But maybe this little fellow can help. Flink, I see you there, but do not, do not be shy, you know. If I am here, the, the gargoyles will not tear you limb from limb. He kind of gestures behind him and you kind of look up towards where the main um, drow building is. And you can see lining the ledges nearby are a lot of gargoyles um, peering down. And, uh, Kalo, you know that they have orders to attack anyone that approaches the main gates without accompanying Drow. Let's just zoom in nice and close so people back home can see too. And there are a couple of Drow elite guards on the gate there as well. And let us also bring Kalo to his proper big boy size. There we go. <laughs> Giant Kalo. <laughs> If you get into a fight, I have to break out the kaiju fight music. <laughs> oh, we'll get there. Are we on that map yet, John? I, I can't see. It. Oh, aren't you? Oh, my bad. Sorry. What is the size differential between Kalo and Zakan at the moment? Um, like, you can are... I bang into his pocket? Oh, absolutely. The pocket protector, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like because you can, if they're one size larger, then a couple of you can ride them. So, you know, it's like a horse is just large. So, um, so yeah, it's small, medium, large, huge. So it's three categories above you. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla's gonna have to carry Zakat around for until the next rest. Zakat, like, oh, hold on, I know you're tired. Hold on, give me a second, and he'll just pick up Zakat and and kind of hold Zakat in his hands, kind of like this. It's so delicate. Like I have it's like, like the I Iron Giant a hummingbird. Like I caught <laughs> yeah. a hummingbird. Like look at him. As oh, so Zakat's skin is is paper thin, so yeah, you, you gotta be careful. Bones are very brittle. It's his paper skin and glass bones. Every yeah, yeah. Night. <laughs> his arms, and every night he breaks his legs to go to sleep. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> as Rufus hails this Svafneblin that is creeping up from the south, um, Zagan, you recognize it to be the one that was hiding away underneath that market stall. Um, from the uh, from the chaos that was going on there, and Rufus turns. He's like, "Ah, my friends, um, Kalo, I believe you have not met either. Uh, this is a uh, a fellow apprentice of the uh, wizarding arts, although they are not mine. They they have a their own uh, <laughs> their own uh, teacher. Um, this is this is Flink, um, Flink Thunderbonk. <laughs> yeah, canon name." <laughs> Love it. And uh, Flink's like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. This is the in. And this is the Dugar. They're playing around. And I don't know. My mistress says she found this thing. And I just a big lump of gold. I don't, I don't know what to do. What's up? Just a, just a hand <coughs> right on top of Flink. Ah! He's going to crush me. Don't crush me, please. No, 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 no. No, no. 
we're your friends. I'm going to pull my hand away. And we're going to talk very rationally about the very irrational happenings happening at our home. Let's try this again. Flink, hi, my name is Kalo, and you've met my father before. These are my friends, Corbin, Alora, and uh, kind of lower Zakan. Uh, Zakan, our dear grandmother. Uh, can you start again? What do you know? Because it seems like you have some pertinent information you should be able to share with us. Um. <sighs> Hey, all right, come on, Flick. Calm down, calm down. Hey, okay. I was, I was just trying, tr trying to do the right thing by my mistress, but oh, Yantha's gonna be so pissed off. I just know she's gonna be so angry. Look, there was, there was a, a Durga ale merchant. What was his name? Uh, Krimgol. Krimgol came and he came and he visited my mistress and he had some he had some gemstone with him. This large black gemstone and he asked Yantha, my my teacher, to uh, appraise it for him to see if it was uh, you know, um, magical or something. And, um, I mean, even, even I could see that it was, uh, it was special, you know. It was a, it was a beautiful thing and clearly very valuable, but for some reason Yantha lied. She told the Durga that it was w relatively worthless and just offered him a lump of gold for it. He, he grew angry, uh, insisted that uh, she give it back, and I don't, I don't know why, but she, she wouldn't, and she tossed it to me, and they started fighting and tussling around the shop, and, well, I know, I know what she wanted me to do, you know, just intrinsically, like, you know, uh, and yeah. I knew that she wanted me to, to hide it away. And so, and so I scuttled out of there, you know, I scappered, escaped. And I don't know what happened, but the Durga, the Durga, the Durga took Yantha back to their building, my mistress. And then realizing that she didn't have it, they, they went over. And they just went into the market and started grabbing up all of the stuff, Nebulin, saying they were going to take them prisoner and ransom them back to Blinkenstone. And now they're over at our our uh, our building, our warehouse. And I mean, yo, it's a it's a sturdy thing, like like yours is here. And he points to the drow, the drow warehouse. But you know what those Durga are like? You know they can they can supersize themselves. It's only a matter of time before they bust in there and grab everyone. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I just tried. I tried to take it out, you know. There's a little beach. A little beach out one of the secret doors. Out on the side, you know, the dark lake. I thought I could hide it out there. So I went, I went scuttling out there and... Oh, gods. Have you lot ever... Come across a quaggoth. You you have right, and he, he turns to you, Kalo, looking up at you. Mm. Right? You, you you guys use them as muscle, right? You, you know that the, the drow enclave here is a bunch of quaggoth. You know, like, much like at the uh, the camp where you all first met. Well, where Zakan and Elora first met. As, um, you know, they often have quaggoths there. There was a... There was a huge, hairy quaggoth. And he he saw me scuttling out the secret door. He was on the beach. He'd come swimming across. Drippy wet he was. His fur all matted to him. And the weirdest thing, he was... He was travelling with a human female. He'd never seen the like. You know, 
Never, never see them. Like traveling together, you rarely see humans down here at all. But um, I mean, apart from the Zentarum, you know, most of them, I guess. But uh, uh, the um, the Quite Goth saw me. He saw the gem, and he came hurtling at me. I'm so scared. Yantha's going to be so angry. I, she wanted me to hide it, but this Quagoth stole it. He stole it and lobbed it to the to the human, to the woman, and then and he was going to tear me to pieces. I managed to slip out of him. He was all he was all wet and uh, managed to slip out of his hold and scarp her back through the secret door. Slammed it behind me. <laughs> Silly Quagoth didn't seem to know the, the password. He got stuck outside. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I barely escaped. But, what can I do? Yantha's going to punish me something rotten for not being able to hide the gem. And, and now she's she's captured by the Durgar. And I don't know what to do. I was what trying to. Did, yeah. What did this woman look like? That he was traveling with. It, it, he describes Esmeralda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was Darindel and Esmeralda. Oh. I was in the direction of where you last saw him. I think, yeah, it's, it's over there. You know, any points to where that is, but but that doesn't matter. They've got Yantha. They're gonna they're gonna grab the information from us somewhere or another. They're gonna find out and they're gonna they're gonna come back and the and the other. The other Smurf Nibbling, they're all in trouble. They're going to get the door tished in any second now. And, um... And he says, um... I was, um... Look, even if you... Even if you're after this gem, you want it, want it for yourselves. Seems everyone else does. It's like, um... It's, it's not there anymore. I was spying on them. You know, trying to trying to catch an opening to you know snatch it back from this uh, from this quagoth but um <laughs> someone beat me to it one of one of this lot and he gestures to the drow warehouse where the gargoyles are perched up on the ledges in the uh, cavern there was a gargoyle like one of those he he grabbed it but um from the quagoth from the quagoth yeah he, he he grabbed the gem I don't, this gem's like a hot potato, you know, gets passed around here and there. And I tell you, everyone that everyone that grabs it starts acting funny. Something rotten. They, yeah. Uh, I don't know. The gargoyle's not here now. He kind of looks up. They, they flew off towards the Zentarum lot. Uh, I don't know why. Came back here first, but uh... you may have an idea why. See, Flick, I told you, with just a little diplomacy, we could have a nice conversation, and you've provided quite fantastic information. Um, but we will have to get that uh, necklace at another time. It seems we've got bigger priorities. Uh, if you'll excuse us for one moment brings the group just kind of away from um, Rufus and Fink for a moment. Yeah, Rufus, Rufus is like, he's like, Flink, Flink, come here. Uh, please, please take, take a seat under our, our nice uh, pavilion here. You need to, you need to calm yourself. You're all a flutter. And, and Flink goes over with Rufus and they're kind of talking and Rufus is kind of calming him down. Just at the size of how Kalo is, he'll just bend a knee and then still be too tall for the rest of the group um, and look down. This is the best shot we've got, Alora. I don't want to take this from you. If you're ready, let's go find her. We don't know how far they travel. We don't know what time we have. I think we better move now. You may be forgetting that uh, we're traveling with one of the Underdog's finest trackers. Small though I may be at the moment. You say that you're like one of the best trackers and Corbin's like, aw, thanks. <laughs> I'm thinking the same thing too. Like Corbin would absolutely respond that way. 
Like, oh, I'm not like, that good. Everyone, just the whole group in their mind, they're just like, oh, Zakan. <laughs> <laughs> I do. You're not going to get any type of no from me. No, how dare you want to save your friend? Why are we still standing here? <laughs> Fair. Let's go. Dad. Yes? I want you to go find Kinye, and I want you to stay there until this whole thing blows over. I'm going to get the both of you once this is over, all right? Hey. Okay. But for now, we have to go rescue a friend. Uh... So get back in there, or I swear I will throw you there myself. Stella, <laughs> your, your temper has grown with your size. <laughs> you know exactly where I get it from, father. Don't argue with me this time. Please, do not remind me of your mother. I think at the mention he just goes silent and looks to the party, nudges to back where they came from, where Flink told them to go. Um, and we'll head there. Okay, look. Blink, do you think you could take us to where you last saw Miss Krogoth? Him? Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Or does almost everything but dash forward kind of like um, actually, along. I think. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, please. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I think. Flink would be too, like, you know, scared of, you know, mm. Duragar, like, roving about the place and stuff. So, um, I think, um, you know, he, he explains to Kalo, um, where, where to go. And, and Kalo, you know, you know the exit. Um, mm. it's, um, you need to go to the western end of the trench. And there's a tunnel out there. Okay. All right, then, well, Flink, get yourself somewhere safe and out of sight. The Duragar's anger will subside, or if it's yeah, magical I'm... in nature, then we'll find out. If I'm, uh, if I'm with Rufus, you know, I'll be able to, uh, you know, to, to lurk here for a little bit. Um, the, uh, he kind of huddles in conspiratorially, the password... The password for the Western Gate, it's, uh, it's in Duragar. It's, uh, Grot. Grot. Does, does anyone speak Dwarvish? No. Corbin? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, Corbin, you, you recognise it's the Dwarvish um, word for stone. I'm double-checking. I'm making sure that I do know Dwarvish and that it's not something else. Okay. I think in, even if you don't like in your dalliances of languages at the uh, in the libraries of Raven Rock, um, you uh, you know, I think one of yeah. the one of the first words in the in the Dwarven dictionary is stone. <laughs> it's stone. <laughs> it's kind of an important concept. It's like knowing the word sushi in Japanese. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. Um. So. You make your way back towards the trench. Um, you're on the map now, right, guys? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll carry Zakan and Corbin with me. I'm sure Laura's is already way ahead, so I'll just grab the two of them and <laughs> put them on my shoulder. <laughs> Which way are you going to go? Are you going to go back down to the market and then across, or are you going to go through the Zentarum section? Excuse me. Uh. Did Fink say was the best way? He didn't. To he just go. said go to the west of the trench. I mean, market side's probably still a little tense, and um, we do have our like sort of permission to be in the Zent area, so that makes yeah. more sense to me. Remember the the Zents that came with you went ahead to the enclave to say that you were coming. Yeah. So like you know, it's not like we'll be unexpected if we pass through. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's just 
describe that first, so just as you pass through. So you're coming through this kind of island area here. Up there. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's fine. Just you just pass through there on the way. It's got a tiki bar. Um, Zakan is the best passive, I think, right? Probably seventeen. Yeah. Eighteen. Oh, nice. Oh, there we go. Oh, Sorry. Oh. Excuse me, Cole. Oh. I apologize. <laughs> Excuse me. It's just, just always the fucking cleric. <laughs> it is there. <laughs> right? Are um, your oops all wisdom at the moment, aren't you? Uh, I think so. There it is. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Um, <laughs> can you see on the map, um, just here at the entrance to the Zentar Mary, there's, there's the gargoyle up on the wall there? Oh, yeah. It's the north, northwest, gotcha. Once I put that picture of, of, of Caleb's dad away, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I'm still lingering, was it? <laughs> He's so pretty. Corbin. It's like, and if, if, and if you're going to get acid burns from a black pudding, I mean, do it in that kick ass way. I know, right? Yeah, that's always cool. Like a good exfoliant. Like <laughs> that was a that was an artistic black pudding. Where? I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, right, right next to where Laura right is now. Here. I I can't I can't see that I I literally can't see my token. Oh, I'm just so it's small. Back back by the uh, yeah, it's a big here. big map. <laughs> yeah, oh. you're in you're in Zakana still by the mushroom. I can't move. I would have carried them at this point. If yeah, Alara's yeah. like already bolting off, I just hand each. We're going. Right. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Come over here, Zakana. A bit undignified, but I yeah, Zakana doesn't move as quick as I used to. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to get there? Do you want to get that quick? They're always, they're always going to be five feet behind us. They're just always five feet behind us. Fair, fair. They could start five feet in front of us. They will just end up in the same position we are. <laughs> okay, so you... Um, yeah, you join. Um, everyone goes over there. And as just as you're about to pass into the Zentarum camp there, um, you spot lurking up on the wall um, a gargoyle, like the ones at the drow camp. It seems to be like looking over the whole area, and you can see here that the um, the Zentarum traders have cut down most of the fungi grove outside the entrance of their warehouse, keeping just a few small patches for decoration. Um, in its place, they've erected the huge pavilion and several smaller tents that you can see, and water dripping down from the ceiling above runs off the tents to form puddles everywhere. And. Perched on the ledge overlooking the pavilion, there is a gargoyle. Potentially. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it's the one that Flink talked about. Um, and there are voices from inside the pavilion. Some sort of discussion is going on there. We had. You're going to pass on by or just. Uh, oh, what? We, we ain't got time for discussions. We got time for Esmeralda. <laughs> Laura and I had overheard the Zents talking about sabotaging some kind of meeting with the drow, or... but if they're going to make any move, it will be later. Sorry, what, what was that, Zaka? Wasn't, wasn't there some kind of, like, the Zents were going to, like, crash some kind of drow meeting or fuck something up for him i think my, my notes my notes are very vague but it is when we were <laughs> eavesdropping i think you discovered the the zents and the drow are hoping to team up and profit from this duragas verfneblin conflict that's right that's right and then they were basically saying like if they get the chance they'll let the drow you know sort of take the fall or take the brunt of the if necessary yeah. the stuff yeah yeah, yeah. Um. So, yeah, you're gonna just keep keep by going by, pass by the uh, the gargoyle, and go south there. Yeah, I can down to the chasm. The essence, eh? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, you pass you pass outside. Um, now, Kalo, I will say one thing. As you pass outside the pavilion, you do hear that all the voices inside are drow. Um, and. One of them you recognize. There is a, a female voice that you spent a lot of time talking to um, as you escaped from Menzo Baranzen, and you hear the voice of the failed assassin, 
Kiniel Drugier. And just for a moment, he'll he'll turn around and, and kind of lean in to see what Kinyel's might be saying. Listening in at, at the tent. Yeah. Okay, but not not going inside. No. Okay. You listen in, and just to you know sum up what's uh, what's going on in there, it's a you know they're they're clearly here to meet the Zentarum and discuss what to do about this emerging situation. Good girl. She's playing nice. <laughs> <sighs> All right. And you pass by and continue down to the chasm. Mm -hmm. Please do. So if you yeah, just head head down there's you know there, there are more um physical winches and lifts to uh transport goods so you lower yourselves down into the rocky chasm in the center of the area where are you going not north south south oh it's not north no south 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 shoot i am an idiot down there do not follow my lead there you go perfect and come in and then yeah, head 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 into the tunnel west there. All right. It's a foot race, everyone. How much <laughs> far behind can you be from Alora? <laughs> million dollar question. <laughs> yeah. Take away the door for you there. Sakan, no, you're falling behind. Let me get you again. There you go. Now, Kalo, you know, um, as you... So, this is basically a mirror image at the other side where you arrived, right? There's the north-south passage that links into the chasm in the middle. And, um, Kalo, you know that the beach that Flink was talking about is south of where you are there. Okay. So just go down until the uh, till you get to the exit of that tunnel. By the way, I want to emphasize I'm yeah, right still there. carrying Zakan. Almost like uh no like a baby carrier. <laughs> With like the you tell a pocket protector. He's just he's just in your lapel. He's blue. <laughs> noted, noted. Like a little pocket light. It's got the <laughs> the staff lit up. A little pen light. <laughs> Okay, so folks, oh, so can you want to catch up there, mate? Hello. So here we are. This is what they can see. Esmeralda, new to new token. Who is? Mhm. Mm As this is, there is a there is an NPC here which I have co-opted to be Esmeralda, and I like the I like the token, so I'm going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, nice. You has changed her. <laughs> yeah. Parents has changed. <laughs> you um emerge from the tunnel in the rock there and find yourself on the rocky shoreline, a stony beach that hugs the column that is the mass of Mantled Earth and is bordered by the dark lakes slowly rippling waters on the other side. And as you emerge, you see that someone has pitched a small tent on this pebbled beach overlooking a vast underground lake. Above the sound of the water lapping at the shoreline, you can hear a soft female voice, Esmeralda's, humming an unfamiliar tune. The voice is coming from the interior of the tent, which is illuminated from within. And if I can quickly... Where are you? 
I'm just going to show you the full art of this instead of just the little token. Because it's pretty. <laughs> yeah. Again, ignore the wrong name. <laughs> oh. Right, I think that's a pretty good look for, for Esmeralda, yeah. right, Laura? Much more stomach. It's yes. got the... <laughs> Her dark is hard in her. <laughs> Apparently, it's got the it's got the you know kind of same kind of hair and <laughs> and she's going uh, she's going green dagger colors. You know, this is her green dagger cloak. <laughs> and um, yes, so you can hear her voice humming a tune. Uh, Elora, you don't know the tune either. So, what would you like to do? This, Laura turns to the other. This seems strange. She's humming, and and we don't see any sight of Darindel, right? There's no, there's no sign now. Well, let me. I've seen things. Let me just check, and um, I'm going to cast Find Traps. Whoa! Ooh, sounds like a new spell. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, one that I haven't brought out too much. Um, mm -hmm. So what Fine Traps does is you sense the presence of any trap within range that is within your line of sight. A trap, for the purpose of this spell, includes anything that would inflict a sudden or unexpected effect you consider harmful or undesirable, <laughs> which was specifically intended as such by its creator. <laughs> Thus, the spell would sense an area affected by alarm, a glyph mm -hmm. of warding, a mechanical pit trap, but it would not reveal a natural weakness in the floor, such as an unstable ceiling or hidden sinkhole. Mm -hmm. Well, worse than the glyph of warding, this is glyph of rickrolling. It's very undesirable. <laughs> very undesirable. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what she's humming. <laughs> uh, you know what, John? Let's double up on that. Um, I'm gonna. This is a wild card. I'm gonna try divine sense. If we know Darendel might be affected by Fraza Blue, I'm gonna try and see if I can get a fiendish pain from Darendel. Yeah, I'm sure, Rishi, I'm sure they labored hard over the name of that one. <laughs> see. Okay, it finds traps. We'll call it Fine Traps. Fine traps. <laughs> what are um, we doing? Finding traps. How are we doing it? Finding traps. traps. <laughs> Zakan, how, how, does, how does this spell like visualize, shall we say? How does, how does it manifest, do you think? Let's see. It is um, verbal and somatic, and so I think like all of Zakan's verbal spells, um, they uh, speak their incantation in the divine language, celestial, mm -hmm. um, and uh, with a couple whispered words and some hand gestures, <laughs> um, they close their eyes and they kind of like spread their yeah. fingers out, yeah, um, almost like you're trying to like, you know, feel for, okay, for wind rod. or vibrations, yeah, dowsing <laughs> round kind of thing. Okay. Nice. Um, Kalo, the dripping water of the cavern and the lapping of the uh, dark lake is accompanied by one more sound as Zakan casts this magic and speaks the celestial. A single tear falls from your morning star onto the pebbles. Zakan. As you cast the spell, and the magic emanates from your outstretched hands, there is like a... almost like a small kind of seismic shift in the pebbles. They're just, they're just like rattling against each other a little. And in four spots around the tent, you see some rather vicious looking hunting traps emerge up through the pebbles and to become visible on the surface. And they would not have done to be stood upon. <laughs> <laughs> These are surrounding where Esmeralda is? or Around the trap, around the tent that she's inside, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so they reopen their eyes and that, you know, glow comes back behind the mask to indicate and um, they say we'll need to approach the tent carefully and there's a number of traps that will need to be disarmed. If Bastard. someone is a bit more dexterous than these old hands, then I can 
point out where they are and um, someone else could uh, like i said they, they, they've, they've been shook up through the pebbles so they're visible to everybody now oh okay, okay. <laughs> do not step on them <laughs> we, we, we don't we don't even need to touch them there there and there <laughs> yes <laughs> that. oh is that what that is i didn't know what that was <laughs> okay. i look weird <laughs> she okay she's humming and she's alone i still feel like something's off do you want me can you can you give oh. me a give me a group stealth check to see how how quiet you're managing to talk amongst yourselves we're quite close to the tent <laughs> <laughs> just creepily whispering <laughs> hubbub 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 <laughs> rubble, 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 right? uh, 18. 18. Dang. <laughs> I'm gonna use a crystal. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm gonna use a crystal. <laughs> Kayla goes, what? <laughs> no, What's just like, hey guys, Kayla. I found Esmeralda. Kayla, what are you doing? You're. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use a Kayla dice. Don't fuck me, Kayla. Uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Better uh -huh. better than a one. <laughs> Corbin, Elora. I rolled oh, an geez. actual one, but I have no. plus have, ten, oh. so I have an eleven. You have two crystals. Same, same but I have a twelve. Okay, let's use a crystal. Let's use a crystal. Mm -hmm. okay. Did you all what? roll natural ones? I think so. Yeah. Wow. Literally all of you Three natural ones. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, seventeen instead. Okay. I thought a sad phoenix is fine. <laughs> I thought a sad phoenix Corbin? is fine. I'm, not, I'm, using, I'm using my dice. My Corbin ah. dice. These so digital dice no longer. Using the crystal? I was, yes, because I rolled a 12. Notice. Okay. Right. But everyone's got their dice now. Right, so yeah. You no, use your no, crystal no. for a 12. Some of us roll natural ones. Gonna... Okay, so I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> so pretty, they're so nice. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. Thank you to <laughs> Phoenix oh, Dice. Thank you so oh, much. Well, I won't do what I do. Yes, there everyone, check out. Oh, no. Check out Phoenix Dice. <laughs> Yeah, um, you gotta do the makeup artist backgrounds people, that it yeah focuses. yeah exactly <laughs> people back home i uh i got uh all, all my players dice that well they talked with michelle of phoenix dice and got uh suitable yeah, ones for their characters that's what i'm talking about all right so i rolled a 12 on dice plus five so 17. it is 17. that's way better much better it's way better, it's way better. <laughs> for an average of 16 yeah, that's that's a lot better. Against her passive perception of sixteen, <laughs> meets it, beats it. So, so it's not that we're not being quiet. It's just she's really, really good, and it's fine. <laughs> it's not. It's not that you're not being quiet, but she's humming just loud enough to not hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but um, I'm not like. A nice oh. I know what I can. I know what we can do. We can make sure that they're not trying to trap you or trick you, and maybe try to kill you. by... and then I'm gonna turn and tell Alora. Okay. I mean, you are definitely seeing double. You're seeing Alora <laughs> in my clothes. This is disorienting. <laughs> yes, but if she has some type of trigger to try to kill you, she'll just try to come at me. And I'll kick her ass. And I'll Why would she, <laughs> she just want to kill me? I have no idea. But at this point, who do we know that hasn't somehow been turned evil? Don't we say do that. know that I'm she was with Darren. Darren turned around and suddenly kidnapped our friend. So I, I don't know what's going on anymore. I will say an extended conversation will need another roll. <laughs> oh, okay. But they're, they're like, I'm going to go see if she's okay. If there's not something. Like, I just, just giant Kayla just drags everyone back into the tunnel. Let's, let's talk in here. <laughs> guys, guys, please. Oh no. Um you who some of you out like Laura's face comes into the tent. <laughs> okay, so Corbin, are you going over? Yeah. Okay, what do you do? You who summer blowout. I wasn't kidding. <laughs> Her head kind of okay. pops into the tent. Esmeralda? I, I, like, it sounds exactly like Alora. It's really, really messed up. Alora goes, do I sound like that? <laughs> yes! <laughs> I've got some bad news. <laughs> so you... It's total off, isn't it? You say you who oh. then pop your head in? <laughs> kind of. Like, I don't just want to be like, hey, Esmeralda, I found you! <laughs> okay, so, sorry. Exact exact words. You who? No, the exact words are not you who. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> 
Do I actually have to say something? If you want, if you don't, if you just want to stick your head in, that's fine. Well, bit. She's just humming inside of the tent. Uh huh. Okay. It, uh, Esmeralda? Question mark. And then head in. Okay. Yes. You keep saying that. So if I become decapitated. <laughs> um, McClover coming in with inspiration for Kalo. Thank you. Thanks, McClover. Um. Okay, so um, you say Esmeralda and pop your head through the tent's opening and there is a click and you come face to face with a hand crossbow face to arrowhead. <laughs> My hand is outside of the tent like go around the tent. <laughs> There's, you know, you just, you see, you see the crossbow there, and Esmeralda's holding it. Uh-huh. And she's, like, and she's like, there is no one of that name here, and you should keep moving, friend. I'm going to say I'm sorry to bother you, and back out of the tent. You know, like, 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 not, not even in a, in a like, oop, I fucked up kind of way. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, genuinely confused. And then I'm gonna back out of the tent. And the whole, I'm serious. My arm, because it was just my head coming in, yep. is doing this to the others to tell them to not be near the tent anymore. Mm-hmm. The second that thing went click, it's like, oh, well, <laughs> hi. I'm like, so do you? Others, so you, what are you doing? Are you backing away? Yeah, she's like, get out. So I'm like, ain't gotta tell me twice. What am I do? Punch her? No, something's clearly wrong. So I'm going to leave. Go regroup with the others and tell okay. them that she's under some type of spell. You, as, as you're backing up, as you're backing away, you hear a flurry of movement inside, a, clack, a clanking of like pots or some, some, uh, you know, belongings. And then as you're about halfway back to the others, no, no, so as you reach the others, there is a, a burst of movement as she exits and rolls out of the tent entrance with a pack over one shoulder and the hand crossbow still in the other hand. And she rolls up to one knee and still has the crossbow. And she looks surprised when there's the others. And she's like, Hello. I have no beef with you. I'm down here on important business. And I need... All of you just leave me alone. And she has the crossbow aimed in your direction, everyone. Alora walks forward and is like, What are you talking about? You were kidnapped. What? What are you talking about? You're as delusional as your twin sister. No. <laughs> I have been down here for... <sighs> Yes. <laughs> um, no matter. It's no business of yours. Stay back. I'm going to leave now. Do Do you not recognize me? No. Esmeralda, we spent years traveling together. What do you mean you don't recognize me? What are you talking about? Can you just said that name as well. That, that is not my name. My name is Ristia. Look. Whatever you're doing down here, wherever you've come from, it's no business of mine. As mine isn't of yours. Just stay back. And she starts walking. Robert, you're confused. You oh. don't know who you are. Alora is going to try to run and, and tackle her to the ground and try to restrain her. She's going to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to dodge. Stop missile. I would and... like to stop missile when it shoots. I would like to try to catch it. <laughs> um, like I can't just... keep up with Alora. <laughs> I will okay. run directly next to her and make way for her. I How would does... like to deflect missile. How does that work again? What's the roll? Um, I just have to try to send... I have to go against it, and if I bring it down to zero, it means I caught it. Okay. Um, let me bring it up so I can read it exactly mm, to please. you. Please. 
Doop 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 doop. Action. Doop 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 doop. Where are you at, diplomacy? Yay, it's a reaction too. Deflect missile. That, uh, you can use your reaction to deflect and catch the missile when you are hit by a ranged attack weapon. I would be putting myself in front of a lord to do so. When you do so, the damage taken from the attack is reduced by 1d10 plus 6. If you reduce okay. damage to 0 and you have a free hand, you can spend one key point to make a ranged attack. That So one thing is me catching it. And if I want, I can use a key point to throw it back. If you, if you get it down to 0. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Right, so um, it's gonna hit you, it's, you know, as, as you dive in the way. It's um, I got a I got a twenty three on right, the um, shot. So I'm gonna roll the damage, and you roll the d ten. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Twenty three. Twenty three. Okay. Let's see. Uh, wait, wait. All right, I rolled an eight, mm -hmm. and it's plus six. Eight, yep, eight nine, 14. ten, eleven, twelve, mm -hmm. thirteen, fourteen. Okay, the damage. From the crossbow bolt was three. <laughs> so she she starts running away and like just fires off a shot. And Alora, as you kind of flinch as it comes towards you, there's a flash just of my, movement. My hand is just yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, and you you open your eyes, Alora, and there's just Corbin's hand just holding onto the bolt in front of your face. <laughs> what are you doing? Run! Like <laughs> they're like, what are you stopping for? Alora kind of ducks underneath and Corbin? just dashes forward. Corbin, Corbin. <laughs> Hmm? Would you like to throw it? <laughs> um, you reduce it to zero. <laughs> yes, but can I aim it for her boot so I can try to stop her movement? Um, I'll say, I'll say if you even if, if you, it's her coat, just yeah, to catch something on the ground. It's like a pinpoint attack like that is rolled with disadvantage, mm -hmm. but you can try, yeah. And and if if you hit her, it will slow her down definitely. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, rolled at disadvantage. Noted. Gonna get my two d twenties. All right, guys, be nice. Everyone, are, are, you, are you even playing D&D &D if you've got a monk in your party and at some point they haven't caught something and thrown it back? <laughs> I throw it back at somebody. Um, am I adding anything to this? Are they two plain D20s? What does it say for the attack when you throw it back? Oh, for the missile? Oh, the missile says I could just do it with a key point. Mm -hmm. Does it say um, what, what kind of attack it is? Zero and have a free attack. hand. You yep. can, yeah, it's a ranged attack as okay. a monk weapon. Okay, so yeah, use your decks. Okay, so plus dex, which... Um, no, that's my save. That's not what I should use. So it's plus dex plus proficiency. Oh, okay. Well, plus dex is two. My proficiency is three. Mm -hmm. Okay, so plus five to hit. Okay. 2d20 is plus five at this advantage. I should be good. Okay. You are a ten plus the, the five. So fifteen? Okay. Fifteen. Yep. And um... That Did was you... the low one. The other one was a 14 plus 5, which is a 19. Okay. Yep. Her AC is 12. So, um, so yeah, you you snatch the arrow, and as Alora goes dashing towards her, you hurl it back, and um, it's um, it's you know spikes into her into her calf, um, and you know does what's the damage on that? Does it say what kind of damage it does? Uh, no, that, same, I mean, it's just same whatever as the initial. weapon. I was just trying to catch her clothing and stick it to the ground. Okay. Um, I think it wouldn't have the force to do that, but, you know, because it's just from your hand. But I think, I think, I mean, you can throw it, so it goes between her legs and she trips over it. Mm. Yeah, okay, like, you know, the, the length of the arrow courts catches in her legs. Um, and, and she trips over it. So, um, Alora, which, you know, it would have been it would have been a flat out, um, you know, you have the same speed, so I, guess, I think. What's your speed? Uh, 30 feet, yeah. Yeah, right, so you have the same speed, so you would have just been dashing at the same speed, but because Corbin's done this, she's slowed, so you actually managed to catch her. So you're gonna, are you going to try and grapple her? Yes. Okay, make me an athletics check. Come on, Alora. Come on. Ten. Ten total? Okay, well, the thing about Phoenix Dice, everyone, is that they roll well for players <laughs> and bad for DMs. Yay! Yes! Yes! <laughs> As I go, a natural one. 
<laughs> so she tries to use her dexterity, you know, as an acrobatics check, to try and slip out and avoid your grapple. But with the added effect of being tripped by Corbin's arrow, um, she just tumbles to the rocks, and you, you just you land on on top of her and just you like pin her with your knees. Get off me! You cannot jeopardize my mission. You need to come to your senses. What mission are you talking about? Make me an intimidation check. Mm. All charisma, so... I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, chat, for that spin of the wheel. <laughs> 17. Mm. Okay, she's like... <sighs> if I tell you, will you let me go? Maybe. Oh, think about it. Tell me. <sighs> My name is Ristia Zav. I I am a spy for the Harpers. You've heard of this organization, Alorus, you know, a, a network of spies and you know, well well meaning, it's a it's a good a good organization. Um, a group of spies that operate throughout Faerun, trying to maintain the balance of power and make sure that uh, evil is not afoot anywhere. Um, and she's like, Mission is not going very well anyway. I came down here two years ago. I'm looking for a place. It's called... Mantle Dareth. There is a group. Mercenaries. The Zentarum. My mission was to infiltrate them there. But I've been lost. And unable to find the place ever since I came down here. Look. If you're going to do it, just do it and make it quick. Esmeralda, you've been poisoned. You've been poisoned by a demon. These are all delusions. None of it is real. You haven't been down here for two years. You're not a spy. You're a rogue, a part of the Dream Dagger. And we've traveled together, and we're basically family, and you don't even remember me. Green Dagger. Even talking about. And she pulls out her pen. She's like, "This, this doesn't ring a bell to you at all." <laughs> Interesting. Do you have any ex Harpers in your organization? That is the. That is the emblem of my unit. You can see the chain is on her neck. Still. No. It's a coincidence. Nothing else. Look, if you're not going to kill me, let me go so that I can continue my search. No, the Underdark has poisoned you. I need to get you out of here. Your, your mind. You've lost your mind. see you reveal your true colors hey though bring me closer <laughs> so set me down here I'm, I'm like 20 feet off the ground <laughs> let me down everyone needs a pocket cleric <laughs> I demand bounties down down <laughs> I please so free Corbin so that I can speak like that the entire session. Let me free gargantuan monster. <laughs> you say please when you ask nicely. Please set me down. <laughs> You're down. You're fine. You're down. This is so degrading. <laughs> so, so can you, they, um... you? You weave your way through the gigantic boulders of this pebble beach. <laughs> 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 they um put their hand on on Alora. Where you um, make them smaller every sentence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shrinking the by the minute. 
continuing to willfully misunderstand the mechanics of small. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not bad, Bob. Um, <laughs> hey, microbiologist coming in with inspiration for Corbin. Thank you, my friend. How you doing, Lizzie? Thank you. Um, they put a hand on Alora and they say, I think, I think you're exactly right, and maybe I can help her if you'll let me. Alora just nods her head and looks up with Alan. It's a phone. All right, this is this is going to be difficult, but I'll try. And then I'm turning to uh, Esmeralda. They say, "I am Zakan, known as the Lightbringer, and I am a guardian of these parts. You may not know us, but Aloha is right in that you have been." poisoned by this place and that is why you cannot complete your mission i can remove some of that influence but you can't fight me on it you have to help me stay, stay away from you foul diminutive sorceress <laughs> she's struggling against you Alora. Can I, um, let's see, let's see. I'm looking for, for things that I can, I can do mechanically. Um, I think, um, I'm just going to, uh, guide myself and, um, they, they pull their, their mask back to reveal that, you know, sort of kindly grandmotherish face and they say, I'm not asking for trust, just for me to heal you. Are you, have you sustained any injuries out here? I can heal those before, before anything else. A likely story. You'll not get anything more from me. The Harpers are airtight, secretive organization. And I'd just like to quickly go to a smash cut of every instance throughout the Iwaki verse. I'm a harper, I'm a harper, I'm a harper, I'm a harper, I'm a harper. I'm a harper. I'm a harper. <laughs> no flashing the pin. Esmeralda, please. Maxine please. as well. <laughs> I'm a harper. <laughs> just, 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 just let them help you, please. I'm begging you. If you let them, I'll let, I'll let you go. Give me a persuasion check. Can I assist on it? So this, is, this, is all, this is all Elora Esmeralda. Alright. <laughs> Chat has already assisted enough. Uh, natural 20. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes the dice just know. Mm. Beautiful. <laughs> and as you say that, Elora, she goes limp. If, if there is something you can do, there's been so many horrors down here. She closes her eyes and just like, goes slack back against the pebbles, not resisting anymore, Laura. Where kind of gets off and allows the con to come in. Alright. It's going to be okay. It's going to be over soon. And um, to start, uh, I'm going to cast Protection from Evil and Good onto uh, Esmeralda. Um, and that's going to grant her uh, advantage on any new saving throws against. Um, Possession, uh, charmed, frightened, those sorts of things. And then um, I want to try and attempt to to remove this uh, this influence. Um, is that um, can that be done with a, a lesser restoration, or, or is that um, some kind of divine check or anything? In your experiences, delusions such as this are a, a form of. Yeah. 
mental problem and lesser restoration is known to help. Okay, um, so we'll we'll try that to, to start. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm concentrating on uh, on that one, but lesser restoration um, doesn't require concentration. So going to uh, with one hand clasp very tight against our holy symbol, uh, we cast lesser restoration and close their eyes and just in the divine tongue say. Raza Blue, by your true name, I have cast your influence out as being. Your celestial magic goes off and a glittering design appears on the pebbles around the three of you forming almost a protective barrier and as you close your eyes to concentrate on the spell images flash through your mind memories of the life of a harper spy fake constructed memories missions contacts two years spent surviving the dangers and the madness that is encroaching on the underdark searching always searching for mantle dareth and never able to find it And as those memories, those visions stream past your consciousness, at the end, you see two eyes glaring from the recesses of Esmeralda's mind. And a large fist snouted creature lumbers out of the darkness of the recesses of Esmeralda's mind. A huge, long necked, bat winged, gargoyle like looking creature. <laughs> tear themselves apart. (laughs) Those gargoyle-like wings carry this vision of the demon lord, Fraz Erblu, into the darkness. The pinpoint of light starts to grow same as the light you give off with your celestial magic and as it does more memories come rushing back in memories of forests laughter the companionship of the members of the green dagger memories of Elora and the others in the forests near Baldur's Gate. And towards the end of this stream of consciousness, memories of you. All of you. Bright-eyed satyr sacrificing themselves so that you may all escape the drow slaver's camp. A gruff, burly minotaur regretfully 
departing and returning to the Feywild. With the sinister black cat slinking round their hooves and ankles. And finally, a darker time as she was captured by the Quagoth who thinks they're Darendil. And rantings and ravings about returning to their master, returning to Fraza Blue, as if they're talking about returning to him himself, to the demon lord themselves. And finally, a sudden flurry of movement and action as the Quagoth leapt upon the unsuspecting Sverf Neblin appearing from the secret door in the tunnel in this column of rock, snatching a black gem from the Sverf Neblin, tossing it to Alora as it chased after the Sverf Neblin who was trying to escape back into the interior. And sorry, I said Alora, Esmeralda. And, and then just the first hand view of Esmeralda clasping this dark kind of grapefruit sized black gem and staring into its depths and her mind starting to be overridden replaced by the deceptions of Frazar Blue but then that light that you saw growing, your own celestial light, overtakes that vision and blocks it. And her memories cease there. And Alora, you feel Esmeralda's body move beneath you again and her eyes open. And as they open, that light that you've seen emanating from Zakan shines from her eyes. And she gasps and looks at you and just f forces her way up, her arms free from your knees, flings them around your neck. Hey, Laura! Oh my goodness! I knew... I knew you'd come. Laura has just like tears coming down her eyes from seeing everything that she went through and she clasped the back of Esmeralda's head and I'm so sorry I left you alone. No. No. You couldn't You couldn't have known. Laura, it's been It's been so Awful. Please. Please. I'm all right. Get us out of here. I can't. I tried. I tried to be strong like you. Kalo, Corvin, Sakan. And she lets go of your neck and from the hug and reaches over and puts a hand on Sakan's shoulder. Thank you. I know what you did. Oh, welcome back. And then she just grasps you even tighter, Laura, and just buries her face in your hair. I tried. But I can't. I can't do this. I want to go back. To go back to the surface, back to the forest, back to the green dagger, to the others. Please. Please. Mm. 
and Dora just viciously shakes her head. Like, yes. Yes, this is not your home. This is not your fight. You shouldn't be here. You have others to take care of. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being such a coward. No, you're not a coward. This is... This is not your calling. This is not where you're supposed to be. So... We can... We can go? I brought you down here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you out. But, but the others, everything that's happening, we'll be fine. We must all go where we are needed. And you need to go home. Nalora. You stand. Esmeralda kind of tucks her knees up and draws her cloak around herself. Hugs her knees. You turn. And look. Varying degrees of elevation. <laughs> it's a car. To Corbin and Kano. Have to bring her home. I have to have to finish what I started there. I won't be able to carry on in this fight until I know she's safe. I hope you understand. We're gonna hug you. You might as well just like pick you up and put you in a new group hug. You're getting <laughs> hugged. <laughs> Laura hugs Corbin back. She like whirls around your ankles, giant spider hug. Like you're getting hugged. <laughs> <laughs> really, I really hope you don't feel like I'm I'm abandoning you, but I just know I would wouldn't be good in this fight until I know Esmeralda's okay. Let's be honest, Alora. You wouldn't have shut up if we had made you go anyway. This is better for all of us. And they say that like in the most jokingly way that they can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, do you know how long we would have had to hear you if you had not gone? <laughs> Traveled you with you for a while now. We all know. <laughs> they're trying so hard not to cry. You can tell, like slowly, like as, like just as they're talking, their voice like, it would be so annoying. <laughs> Quick question, does Corbin still look like Alora? Yes! <laughs> oh, please, yes! Come on. <laughs> yes, yes, they do! It is just crying you Laura. crying at you. This self-sass, how do you feel about this self-sass? It's a very emotionally complicated moment. <laughs> and they don't realize they're still looking like you, like, yeah. at all. It's a conscious... Webster. <laughs> Webster's pointing like the Spider-Man meme. So, hmm? <laughs> no, you, you, no, you. Where's mom? <laughs> and you, f you feel a, a hot breath on your shoulder, Laura. And there's a kind of rough, kind of rasping feeling as uh, a scaly, a scaly dragon winds up and curls quite heavily and awkwardly, Corbin now, size-wise around Corbin's neck. Your, like holding your neck, a baby looks... Saint Bernard, like yeah, holding yeah. a Saint Bernard puppy, <laughs> and a young red dragon says, "Allora, illustris." Reluctant absentee queen. 
and their tail kind of squeezes you, Corbin, and you hear a little out of the side of the mouth. Apologies. Mother of dragons. Or at least onsen, buddy. Surrogate mother of dragons. <laughs> <laughs> no, I take the squeeze to understand, and it's just like, I'll let you have this one. <laughs> you. You need to look after yours. I'll look after this one. And he curls All around to Corbin's shoulders. Japanese. Like, Corbin does not know what is being said right now. No, no, he's, mm -hmm. he's, he's picking up common now. Dragons are okay, okay. very intelligent. <laughs> Your language Yay. Has, has developed. You haven't spoken to me so directly before. I can <laughs> never get a word in edgeways. It's not as fun as you think. He gets old really quick. Just clean it. Never. <laughs> <laughs> he's like... I'll clean my room. Just purge with fire. <laughs> there. And then you'll continue to grow big and strong and, and take care of Corbin. I think take care of you. Corbin said, My father was. Big chonka, I think was the phrase. <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> Check the uh, D and D movie trailer if you want to see Thamba shout. <laughs> right, Thamba. if you would like to see a station chunky boy and resident father of Chucky. Yeah. He, they they did they did that true and <laughs> Caleb, it's okay. Well, trying still not to tower over everybody. <laughs> I, I think Alor's about the same size. Sitting um, cross-legged. If, if you kneel down, the Lord's same size. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> you have a much harder fight than you realize. Making sure Esmeralda is safe. And you go with the strength of only the finisher. So, puts a hand on your shoulder. Don't be a stranger, all right? Make sure she's good. That's the only fight we need you for right now. I feel more at ease knowing that the party has you here. Oh, are you kidding? Corbin's just waiting to stab me in the back. They're whispering this. <laughs> <laughs> Unknowingly, Gordon is just in the back playing with a knife. Like, doesn't know what's happening. <laughs> just happens to be just playing with one of her daggers. Well, she does, you know, they do have a tendency to stab accidentally every once in a while, but it's all, you know, good fun. The shuns are not good fun. That's something you and I can discuss later. <laughs> Be safe, Alora. We'll be here, waiting. Whenever you're ready. But once, a, once Esmeralda's safe, we'll know you've won this fight. I promise I'll, I'll make my way back. See to it. I'll have to, uh, and kind of just pluck um, Corbin's ear. I'll have to watch this one while you're away. And very loud at Corbin, as as he says that. Charcuccio just bears their fangs and a wisp of smoke at you, Kayla. You know I can make fun of your dad this way. No, stop! <laughs> this is like legit, like monk fighting this one finger, like ah. <laughs> flurry, flurry of cuticles. <laughs> <laughs> you now have a hangnail because I punched a nail too hard. <laughs> Son of a bitch! Ha! I did not mean to do that. <laughs> don't say, Kayla, Don't say things like that in, if you're in a shot of Raven Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna be uneven for weeks. Zakan. Zakan at a 
being referenced um, shakily, stands up because uh, they've been just catching their breath down on the ground. And <laughs> there's a a deep breath and a quick smile before the, the mask goes back on and they say to Alora, I don't have much experience in this kind of thing, but from what I know, the best leaders are the ones who can see each person and take the time to save one person if they need it. I think that whatever you choose to do with your right as a ruler, a leader, and it starts from this. After all, if we, what's the purpose in throwing ourselves at this eternal pit of hells and trying to stop these demons coming through if there's no one we care about left afterward? Follow the river, find a settlement, join a caravan and get her home. Stay safe. I can't tell you what bringing her back to me means to me because I think you said it perfectly without, without her and the rest of my family, the world is nothing to me. So I need to save my world before I save everyone else's. Well, you can thank me by throwing an arrow through any fiendish demons that you encounter along the way, thin their numbers out a little bit. Oh, we'll cut right through them, don't worry. <laughs> and you two, pointing at the two of them, fighting. <laughs> what? One of you is what? going to have to rub my shoulders or continue to carry me or something that was exhausting. <laughs> Not it in this next one. <laughs> Step of the wind. <laughs> and Elora, we'll be fine. Elora, as you as you say goodbye to the others, Esmeralda calls out. Elora, look. And she's pointing north. And you can see. Zentarum boats, two of them, heading out from around the shoulder of the column of rock that contains metal earth, and it looks like there are some Zentarum agents making a return journey, back the way they came. Looks like our our ticket there has arrived. And Esmeralda looks at you all. <sighs> Thank you. Come on, Laura. She grabs your wrist. Hey, wait, wait calls out towards the Zentarum who recognize you and change course towards the beach and with Laura casting backward glances over her shoulder the two of them make their way up the pebble beach to where the Zentarum boats crunch into the stones and nimbly vaulting into the interior and exchanging a few words the Zentarum oars reach out and push off the pebble beach and the Zentarum agents their boats Esmeralda and Delora slowly disappear with a soft splashing of oars across the waters of the dark lake and towards the Zentarum tunnels 
back towards the surface world. The forests surrounding Baldur's Gate. And the remaining members of the Green Dagger. And that is where we shall stop for today. As the three of you watch until they're out of sight, look to each other, set your jaws, and turn back towards the entrance to Mental Dareth. And your continued efforts to stop what's rising out of the abyss. Roll credits if we have them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> End of season three or wherever we are. Yeah. <laughs> right, this is like mid-season finale. It's like mid-season finale. <laughs> Will Alora return? Will they be able to find the others and find what they're looking for down in Mantle Dareth? I hope Will so. Corbin finally get a goddamn hook horn? <laughs> Find out next time. <laughs> out of the abyss. Brought to you by. It's pretty good. You can be pretty good, actually. <laughs> a massive thank you to my wonderful players and everyone in chat supporting those crystals coming in clutch once again. <laughs> As always, thank you so much. And I know, in my heart of hearts, that you all want Elora's last spare crystal to go to me. So I'll just pop that <laughs> over there with my other two. <laughs> Who told them that? Who told them that? <laughs> Which one of you said that? <laughs> I, I just, I just sensed it. You get that? You get a feeling for these things? <laughs> no, I should put it back in the pool. <laughs> the Dark Lake pool, Elora's favorite. <laughs> favorite body of water <laughs> okay so everyone um as you may have gathered <laughs> our wonderful friend now now i'm actually gonna tear up <laughs> oh, oh, John. Oh. our wonderful friend sam is going to not be able to be with us for a short while hopefully but if they're able they will as corbin has suggested for the latter half of season whatever season this is <laughs> Will hopefully hopefully be able to return at some point in the future. And yes, thank you, Sam, <laughs> for everything. And thank all of you for joining us today. And let us wrap things up by drawing our winner for the giveaway today. A big old chunky bundle. Speaking chunky is the word of the day. <laughs> a chunky bundle of maps. The winter map chonk. bundle. Chonk. The chunk. The chunk. The chunk. The chunk. <laughs> um, the map bundle, the winter map bundle from CZRPG going to a, a lucky, lucky winner. So if you would like to jump in there, it's your last chance to jump into that exclamation mark. Enter in the chat for your chance to win. And we'll draw the winner after we've said goodbye to these fine folks. Actually, let me just do our, our rundown of what's coming up at the end of the week here. And then uh, we we'll should say our goodbyes um, after the giveaway. Um, we will be back um, later today for me, first thing tomorrow if you're on that side of the world with our friends over in Barovia and beyond. And we will be joined by a new returning friend as a priest cleric of Anubis leaves the dread realm of Harakir to reunite with our Barovian adventurers as they confront the corrupted carnival that is the Revalia and helps them in their mission to continue trying to free the ladies of the Thanes that Barovia may be returned to the material plane. No Wild Beyond the Witchlight tomorrow, but we will be back on Friday with Chisenta's Tyranny, our sneak peek preview playthrough of CZRPG's upcoming campaign. But we will also be delighted as we go into Valentine's week, we are going to be featuring the work of the fabulous Dan Karn 
Frictionless Dan, as he is also known, the awesome, awesome writer who you've seen um, feature in lots of our campaigns already. We are featuring another, speaking of sneak peek preview playthroughs, another of their upcoming adventures going to be released very, very soon in time for Valentine's Day, as they have several romantically themed heists. And those of you who have been watching Jacenta's Tyranny will know that they are the guests in the house, the mansion of one Dampier, known as Fenicus. Now, Fenicus has realized that an ancient love letter that they wrote to a alarmingly hot vampiress has shown up in a recent collection that has gone on display in the local museum, and they implore our adventurers to sneak into the museum and steal away this love letter before the opening day and before the vampires can see the embarrassing outpouring of love and affection that is in this love letter. So join us for a Valentine's themed heist in CZRPG's Chisenta's Tyranny, featuring the wonderful work of Dan Karn um, as we do that on Friday with our good buddies. Patch is away on holiday, but the others will all be there for this heist. Then um, that will bring us round nothing on the weekend, but that'll bring us round to the hunger of a thrim on Sunday night, Monday, where we'll be continuing our delving through the lost Netherese city of Ithrin with our evil Vecna um, employed party. And finally, that will bring us back here to these wonderful people as they return to the interior of Mantle Dareth to confront whatever is happening there and continue to thwart the corruption of Frazar Blue and find their way forward. And thank you, Baron Dragonborn. Yes, a timely, um, a timely question there. Friday next week, Friday the 17th of February, we are very honored to be part of and kicking off the entire weekend stream of the fantastic Legends charity stream, the Legends charity Greyhawk stream, which will start with us here on Phoenix Iwaki with very special guests, Dead Odyssey Gamer and Guy Sklanders of How to Be a GM fame, as we play a game of Blades in the Dark, speaking of heists, as they will be doing a Blades in the Dark heist in Greyhawk. The entire weekend is Greyhawk focused and lots of different groups, our good friends who raided in. Thank you, Guild Superior, for that raid. We were in the thick of things there, so I couldn't say it at the time. Um, our friends over at Guild Superior, Phantom NJ, Darling Creep Show, GM Workshop, the awesome Dragonlance uh, premiere yesterday. Um, all of those and lots more of amazing friends with, of course, our fantastic host, Jay, aka Lord Gasamba. All of us will be working together over the weekend, non-stop streams, Troll Lord games, everyone in there, um, Blue Box um, RPG, everyone working to um, raise funds and get money for the fabulous St. Jude's Children's Hospital. So if you are able to join us, please support. If you are able, please donate to the very good cause. Give yourself the chance at a very, very wonderful um, charity giveaway and all of the amazing prizes that are in that giveaway too. Um, lots of amazing stuff as always from Lord Kasamba. Um, so please join us. If you're not able to donate, that's absolutely fine. If you can just help spread the word on Twitter and on socials and everything, that would be absolutely amazing and uh, tune in for any of that if you're able. It's going to be an amazing stream, the finale of which um, includes a certain uh, Luke Gygax and um, creator of the Forgotten Realms, um, a certain uh, Ed Greenwood as well, will be there for the finale stream with Lord Gosamba himself. So um, please do join in for any of that so that you are able, and we're hopefully able to get um, lots of funds together for this amazing cause. Um, and of course, there will be the chance to influence play. <laughs> Okay, so, thank you, my friends. Wonderful, wonderful stuff, as always. Now, let us choose our giveaway winner. Um, so, good luck, everybody, if you are in there. Closing up the entries. Actually, let me just do a quick refresh, make sure we've got everyone in there. Yeah, I'm so excited. Of course, <laughs> of course I've done my usual things. Like, my first time playing a new system or running a new system, and I, I invite, like... <laughs> Famous guests to, to join. <laughs> right in the deep end, right in the deep end. As, as you, no as pressure, you right? You've got that. You, it's yeah, first no, time, you're good. How to be, you know, how to, how to be a, um, you know, a great GM was like one of the first D&D YouTubers I ever watched. <laughs> and that's actually the first place I saw Dead Aussie Gamer. Now they're going to have them playing together. 
Um, he was playing in uh, in the great uh, Ghosts of Saltmarsh game over on How to Be a Great GM. Ah, oh, McLeod, thank you. Yes, Sam. Sam, we will miss you. <laughs> Sorry, we can do that. We can do that cheery stuff in a second. Two seconds. <laughs> okay, closing up those entries there. Let's do some congratulations first. As today's CCRPG Winter Map Bundle goes to da -da 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 -da. Urban Zombie. Congratulations. Double check they're still logged in here. They are indeed Urban Zombie. Congratulations! I'll be getting your details. Um, Urban Zombie, can you shoot me a whisper here on Twitch, and then I can uh, grab an email from you to have that big bundle sent to you, um, and uh, we'll get that to you at the end of the week when we have all our winners. Congratulations! If you want another chance to win, join us for Brovio and Beyond, or send us Tyranny, and we have two more chances to win that awesome bundle. And we hope to see you all again very, very soon. But it is goodbye for now. And goodbye to these fine people. Let's go across right to left. Zakan, who are you in the material plane? Hi, everyone. I'm Steven, and I played Zakan, our um, tiny for the moment, uh, <laughs> Asimar cleric slash ranger. Um, you can find me at Distant Shores on Twitter, and um, if you're interested in Japan culture and history, I just started up a newsletter called um, 72 Micro Seasons, um, which you can find on uh, my Twitter there. Nice. Awesome, awesome. Um, I'm actually going to pull it up here as well. Um, let me grab that link for you all. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. And... Go away, go away, go away, go away. Here we go, folks. Here's the link for that to jump on over and give that a look. Some interesting insight into the Japanese seasonal calendar. Is that right? Yeah, the old seasonal of the 72 micro seasons. Nice. Interesting <laughs> stuff. Um, if you want to polish up on your draconic, <laughs> jump in there. And <laughs> Corbin, how about your good stuff? Muted, muted. There's nothing for me right now. There's been a kind of uh, low-key upset when it comes to me getting things set up with this Cult of the Lamb mm. thing, but I'm trying to get the Twitch integration to work properly for me so that I can have people type in their names that they can be the followers for the cult that I'm building yeah, yeah. for uh, <laughs> Cult of Buns. But once I get that situated, hopefully I'll be able to get everybody um, cool. connected to it. Yeah, it's a bit buggy. I remember our friend uh, GTG Vicky um, had some trouble with it at the start as I'm well. trying to do it too, yeah. yeah. But it got, it, got, it got sorted, so it is, it is doable. Okay, thank you, thank you. And Kelo. Kelo. Hello. Kelo. I was Kelo. My government name apparently is Mike. Take that for what it's worth. Gover I'll be. Government name? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Given name? Uh, but you, you know, what they, what, they, what they call you on the legal papers. Um, <laughs> on the legal poppers. <laughs> the legal poppers. Um, I won't be here Sunday for Hunger of Ithrin, but uh, mm -hmm. I will be back here for Out of the Abyss next week um with the eternal question will corbin and kalo's dad find a valentine in each other we'll see <laughs> well yeah special but hang on is it valentine's no no we're just gonna miss that no, it's Tuesday, it's day <laughs> yeah, 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 we're just missing it we're just missing it we're just missing it <laughs> indeed but yeah the, the, the vibes are going through the week <laughs> okay thank you i mean stop trying to make me your stepmom <laughs> The art is trying to make you this. <laughs> I'm doing nothing. That's all you. Hey, wait yeah. till... Just because I'm not a coward doesn't mean that I want commitment. <laughs> wait, wait, wait till you see the draw assassin that Kalo uh, passed by in the tent there. Unless you're ready to romance me, stop showing me hot people. How about that? <laughs> fair, fair, fair. <laughs> and last but not least, by any measure, you care to employ Elora Lustrous. Sam in the real world. Uh, I'll play Alora Lestris, High Elf, um, Rogue Assassin from the Draenor. I'm always amazed how John can weave our backstories into the story and make it this fun mishmash of chaos. Um, <laughs> hopefully it'll be a very short break and I will be back with all of you down uh, in the end park. Maybe we will see you next <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us so far and of course you're welcome back absolutely any damn time you like and we look forward to that day a massive thanks everybody 
And we, of course, are going to head off raiding. Let us head on over to our friends. Um, let's see. Um, any of our stream team on at the moment? No, none of the stream team are on at the moment. But um, our friends over at the Litching Hour are on. Now, everyone, Lich and everyone over there at the Litching Hour have just started up their Kickstarter for the board game version of the awesome um, Viva La Dungeon that uh, I guested on and played over there. Um, it's a really, really fun game. And uh, I know some of you have already backed the Kickstarter. Thank you very much. So um, once we head over there, please jump into their chats, let those phoenixes fly and ask them all about it and get the, get the link for that. Hey, Baron, you too. Yeah, um, I've seen um, some of their like regular players like um, Little Bones. Um, she she already got her like pre-copy of it. Um, and the art and everything in it is absolutely gorgeous. It's really beautifully made. They did a really good job. And um, so yeah, everyone jump in their chat, ask them all about it, type up that Kickstarter there. And if you're interested in a new and interesting board game that I, as a player of the online version, can guarantee is a very fun gameplay, um, please do uh, jump on that and uh, support it if you're able. Lich and everyone over there are uh, cool people. Um, so please stick around and let's go see how they are doing. Great. Okay, my friends, thank you. That is all for today. Stick around for that raid. If you've got them, let those phoenixes fly. But till next time, as we like to say around these parts, Oyasumi no Sai. Oyasumi! 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 Oyasumi.